Hey, um, it's been a little bit, about two months I'd say. Should probably make another video, huh? Let's see what I got here. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, this'll do. So if you couldn't tell by the fact I'm four episodes into this creepypasta review series, and I haven't covered Jeff the Color Slender Man, I love talking about obscure shitty creepypastas that can only be found by going onto the creepypasta wiki and clicking the random pasta button 30 times. There's just something fun about obscure stories like giraffes are no longer my favorite animals, or watch for wandering towers. Finding them is like digging up fossilized mammoth shit. It's still shit, but it holds an odd value to it. Well, my friends, I don't think you can get much more obscure than this story I've uncovered for you today. Because unlike the last three stories, which were either on the Creepypasta wiki or on r slash no sleep, I could only find a written version of this tale on what appears to be a review request on the Creepypasta wiki, where the moderators were deciding whether they should nuke the shit out of this story from orbit. Ladies and gentlemen, I present possibly the worst story I've encountered in this series so far, Rusty Fingers. Let's cut to the chase and dive right into it. So our story begins as all Creepypastas do with no name protagonist number 89 telling us that he knows his story is ridiculous and that you probably won't believe it, but that he isn't some fool that writes creepypastas for fun. I'll be the judge of that, mate. Anyway, his story actually begins when he explains that it began while he and his brother were on vacation in England. Major flaw with the story already, because who the fuck would want to go to England willingly? Moving along, Protag over here explains that he and his brother were staying in a room in a hotel room that they rented for the night. And it all of a sudden hits me like a rock how rough this roller coaster is going to be. Buckle in, folks. The author then fucks up his own continuity literally in the next sentence when he explains that he was trying to sleep one night, which implies he had been there for multiple nights because otherwise he wouldn't need to specify one night. Fuck it, moving on. He says while he was trying to sleep, he kept hearing crying coming from the check-in desk, and no matter how hard he tried to ignore it, it kept getting louder. So either the protagonist failed to mention that he's staying in a japanese scene motel with paper walls, or that he's part wolf, because he can actually hear that shit clearly despite us learning a little later on that he's at least a few floors above the lobby. Cautiously, the protagonist, who I'm just gonna call Joe from now on, grabs his flashlight, which is weird that he just has one on him while on vacation. Maybe he's spending his vacation spelunking. I don't know. And also, weird that he grabs it at all because most hotels are well lit even at night. Either way, he heads out to investigate the noise. He also says he's surprised his flashlight even works, which I can't even begin to wrap my head around, because there's nothing implying... Okay, look, we're two paragraphs in. I've spent over a minute talking about how everything involving this flashlight has taken years off my life. So I'm gonna stop picking at every terrible thing here, or this video would be an hour long at least. So he marches down to the lobby, all while hearing generic spooky screams and Kafka laughs in the distance. When he arrives to the lobby, he sees a child sitting on a blood soaked couch, and apparently it takes Sherlock over here a couple seconds to realize this kid looks like Red Skull from Captain America mixed with Eyeless Jack. He then notices another figure is standing besides the boy, and oh boy, this character is a mess of a design. The child does a title drop when they refer to the monster as Rusty Fingers. Then he gives a bout of exposition about how he takes people's faces and how this will save them from the world somehow. Joe, probably in a mech suit of some kind, tells Rusty Fingers to stay away from him. And now we get to hear what Rusty Fingers actually looks like. He's described as 8 feet tall with long sharp fingers, no eyeballs, terrible dental hygiene, and has wings and horns. Oh, he's also covered in hair, and frankly, he just sounds more like an edgy 13 year old has been hotel OC than a horror monster. Then the dude's head starts like a fucking pinwheel before he yells at Joe for not trusting that he's their savior despite clearly being an evil monster. The child, who's a girl apparently, climbs on Rusty Finger's back in a way that Joe describes as freakishly tender, which sounds like how McDonald's would advertise a new burger. Joe wonders why no one else has investigated the lobby yet and Rusty Fingers? who, like Bullrog, has lots and lots of powers, reads his mind and tells him that everyone in the hotel has been leather-faced already. Joe runs away at this point with Rusty Fingers chasing after him, Kefka laughing as he goes. He tries to run up a flight of stairs, but he's a horror story character, so he inexplicably trips on the final step, allowing Rusty Fingers to catch up to him. Rusty Fingers pins Joe down and prepares to end the story before any more grammar mistakes can be made. 
Joe won't stand for that though, and using his inexplicable main character strength, pushes this clearly magical 8 foot tall demon off him before grabbing it by the arm and throwing him out the window. And Rusty Finger just straight up dies from this apparently. And this clearly otherworldly monster was overpowered by a random dude and dies from a one story drop. I'm shocked this character never caught on. Anyway, wrapping this up before my skull melts any further, Joe returns to his room, inside a room, and checks on his little brother, who, shock horror, also looks like an eyeless red skull. Dun dun dun. Well that was a piece of shit, wasn't it? Frankly, I don't think I need to dive into why this one is objectively horrible, but I'm going to anyway, because there's just so much wrong. It needs some form of analysis. Let's talk about something I really didn't mention in the previous episodes, but is a major issue in this story. Creepasta as a genre is a never-ending cycle of one dumbass story ripping off another dumbass story. Since the creation of characters like Slenderman, Jeff Killer, and to a lesser extent The Rake, the genre has shifted away from creating essentially online ghost stories that take advantage of online anonymity to strike fear into the reader, to desperately attempting to make the next big monster that will be loved by the fandom for at least a week. Most creepypasta rip also will focus on one of these three, Jeff the Killer, Sonic.exe, or Squidward Suicide, mostly because it's pretty easy to just rehash these base stories with a couple minor changes. Rusty Fingers is a ripoff as well, but not of one of the main three. Instead, it falls into the same category as something like Eyeless Jack or Laughing Jack, because as we all know, Jack is the scariest name. But yeah, the story, like those two, follows a nameless protagonist as, as they and their loved ones are attacked by a supernatural monster that is clearly the main focus of the story. Rusty Fingers is like the bootleg version of Eyeless Jack and Laughing Jack in regards to both the story and the character himself. The dude's description is just way too overly complicated in comparison to someone like I was Chuck and Laughing Jack. He's covered in hair, has horns, and a set of wings that apparently are just for show because the dude drops like a rock when he gets thrown out that window. He just has so much going on in his design and it's all over the top to the point the mental image the reader conjures up is closer to a cartoon devil than anything that's actually scary. And story-wise, his presence in the story is so weak and unthreatening and any intimidation that he might have had is literally thrown out the window when he's defeated within a paragraph by an unarmed protagonist. Him being defeated so easily also raises the question of how he was able to kill the rest of the hotel. Are you telling me that this creature that was easily overpowered by this random schmuck killed at least a dozen people without making a sound? I could probably kill this thing myself pretty easily, which is not a good look for your character that you're clearly trying to make into the next big thing. Now that we've discussed the frankly laughably bad monster, let's talk about this story's more obvious flaws. And yes, it does have more obvious flaws than the fact its monster is weaker than sugar glass. This is easily the worst story I've covered from an objective standpoint. It's filled with blatant, obvious grammatical and spelling errors. And most surprising of all is despite being less than a page long, it fucked with its own continuity constantly. The most notable example of the story's wacky continuity is the location in which the story actually takes place because it genuinely seems like the author just forgot they were staying in a hotel near the end of the story, because it refers to their hotel room as the main character's apartment. Along with some egregious tent swaps and, um, and the whole shit with the main character and being surprised his flashlight turns on, with no reason given to suggest it wouldn't, it's pretty clear to see why this is the worst story I've covered so far from a writing perspective. There's really no excuse for this either. You could point a majority of the flaws within this story out with a single read through. And this story isn't Stephen King's It. It's barely a page long. So to post this story on the Creepasta Wiki without even bothering to read through it one time, it's just really lazy. Like you couldn't take four minutes out of your day to go back and fix some of this shit. No wonder this story got deleted from the wiki. Let's wrap this one up because I'm beating a dead horse at this point. This story is awful in more ways than one. It's awful objectively, as it's horribly written, clearly not proofread, and is mind-numbingly inconsistent in its setting and plot. It's also bad because it's so obvious that this story's entire purpose was to promote Rusty Fingers as a character into stardom, like Jeff the Killer or Laughing Jack, despite the character himself being overly complicated to the point it almost seems like a parody and being easily defeated by an unarmed, presumably young man and gravity. It's a shit show from all angles, and its only redeemable quality is that it's frankly pretty unintentionally hilarious, especially towards the end. I give it a 1.5 out of 10. Worst story I've covered so far. The only reason it's not a 1 is because it's 
pretty funny, as previously mentioned, and because it's short as fuck, so I don't have to suffer through it for too long. I can't say I'm shocked this one isn't on the wiki anymore. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Sorry for the long wait between videos. College was on my ass, and when it was over, I just kind of slacked off for a little while. I promised to have another video out within a week to make up for it. Also, if you hadn't noticed, I had gotten myself a microphone finally, so you guys can listen to my reviews without being blasted by horrible audio. Tell me what you all think about it. As always, leave a like and a comment, and subscribe. And if you want a story to be reviewed in the future, drop its name in the comments below. Next week, I'll be covering a fan suggestion, and oh boy, this is one hell of a way to start. See you guys later.